Hello! You might know me as someone who makes League of Legends guides on YouTube. This is one of them. Unfortunately, preseason 11 is around the corner. Well, preseason is here. Season 11 is around the corner, and all new items have been added to the game, making all of my guides that I've made, Pantheon, Nico, Azir, all of them just irrelevant. They don't mean anything anymore. So now I have to change everything and make new videos. I guess that's a good thing because now I get extra content, but you know what? I've done all this work and I found the opportunity to change it up and make something a little bit different. So hopefully you'll enjoy this. You get something out of it. This is a beginner's guide to Azir. Hello everyone. Welcome to another video. My name is Alex. So we're going to go over Azir. We're going to talk about how, what you should build on him, how to play him, uh, and in general, just what you should be doing when you're picking the good old Emperor of Shurima. So he's one of my favorite champions. I pretty much have started, I, I started maining him and one-tricking him in January of this year. So it's been a few months uh, of either successful or unsuccessful gameplay. It goes up and down, don't, don't, yeah, it's just things. We're gonna go over a few things. I'm gonna have everything labeled out so you can skip wherever you want to go. If you wanna skip over like the skills, you wanna skip over like combos and stuff like that, you can go to the different sections around the video. First, I'm just going to talk a little bit about an overview of Azir. What is he good at? What isn't he good at? Azir is great. He's really much, he's a control mage. He's also a hard carry in the late game because of how he scales. Um, he scales a bit differently than a lot of late gate, late scaling champions. He doesn't scale particularly with items, but with other things. And he's really good at wave clearing. He has good poke, outranges a lot of champions. Doesn't really get hard countered by a lot of champions either, but he does have a hard time with some particular ones, which we'll talk about later. Some of the things that make him difficult is that overall he's just a a difficult champion to play. It takes a lot of time to master. You can kind of pick him up and start playing around with him and you'll get a lot of, you know, <laughs> you'll get just, you'll just get, you'll just get totally reamed by your, uh, your team because you're playing as you're very poorly, you're like 0 and 5 or whatever, you haven't done anything, you have 100 CS at 20 minutes. It seems terrible. He's really fun to play. I think he's one of the more interesting and, and more like fun champions to play in the game. He has a lot of uses with his kit. He's a control mage. It makes him really fun, but obviously late game scaling means you have to be patient. So firstly, we're going to talk about his skills and then we can move on to things like combos and items and gameplay and stuff like that. But if you want to skip over that, obviously, if you already know what he does, then you go ahead and skip over this. But we'll start with his skills and his passive. Azir's passive is called Shurima's Legacy. Basically, he can put a tower down wherever there's a destroyed tower, unless it's like the enemy's inhibitor tower or nexus towers. Any other tower is fair game. He'll summon a tower, it'll last for a certain amount of time, does some damage based on his AP and like stacks up. Just like a standard tower, it gains attack damage as it goes and keeps attacking something. It decays over 60 seconds, but if you walk far, too far away from it, it loses like 100 armor. So if you want to use the tower to like hold a wave or fight in a team fight, like if they're fighting around the tower, you can rush in, summon the tower, start doing damage. You want to do it and stay near it for as long as possible. So it stays up for much longer under like enemy fire and stuff like that. Azir's Q is Conquering Sands. This is your general movement of your soldiers ability. It's your main damage in the early game, but it's kind of just for the late game, just moving your soldiers around. Just continually think about like, okay, I want to use this to move my soldiers. If I use this, it goes on a long cooldown. I don't really want to use it and waste it. It does some decent damage early game and it slows. It also slows for every subsequent soldier that you hit someone with it. So the slows actually kind of stack up on top of each other. Azir's W, his main ability basically, because all of your other abilities work off of this ability is called Arise. You summon a sand soldier and that soldier can then be used to attack with instead of regular auto attacking. You have to be within a certain range of the soldier to auto attack with it. It's like it has a little circle that it can attack in. You can see where it hits and stuff like that. It's kind of weak early game. So using it just to kind of like poke him out a little bit, proc some like runes and stuff like that. That is nice. Um, it is your main damage source throughout the game though, because the ability has a passive where it gives you passive attack speed as you level it up, but also if you have three soldiers out, you get extra bonus attack speed on top of that. You are strongest when you have three soldiers out. So keeping up soldiers, especially in late game, we have low cooldowns, lots of mana, just keep spamming the soldiers all over the place so that you can just continually have the passive for as long as possible. Azir's E is called Shifting Sands. Uh, this is your movement ability. Don't try to spam it too much because it has a long cooldown. But basically what happens is when you have a soldier out and you want to move around and move to that soldier, you hit Shifting Sands. You can target different soldiers if you want to, but whatever soldier you target, or if you only have one soldier, you'll dash to that soldier 
soldier, dealing damage along the way and gaining a shield. If you run into a champion, you deal damage to them and you stop in place. So you stop when you collide with an enemy champion. Great thing about that, or not so great, I mean, colliding with a champion can be kind of useful, especially if you want to set up for other abilities, is that it does give you another charge of your W. So your W works off charges and you get an extra one when you collide with an enemy with shifting sands. So you can like have two soldiers out, dash in, hit the E, get a third soldier right away, start smashing those auto attacks into them and doing a lot of damage. And again, I wouldn't use the ability a lot because obviously it has a long cooldown. It also uses a lot of mana, especially if you, you do your full combo, which we'll talk about. He doesn't have a whole lot of mana to use, so just be wary about that. Your R is called Emperor's Divide, and it summons a big-ass wall. You summon a few soldiers out, they start from behind you, and they push forward to deal damage along the way. Anything caught in the rushing forward of these soldiers uh, knocks people up and away. So it's a good CC ability if you want to stop channels and stuff, but also blocks off areas so anyone can't pass through it. Basically like an Anivia wall, just the normal terrain. No one can walk through except you and your allies. So it's a good way to cut off like areas for people to walk through, zone people off, or just getting stuff like assassins or tanks off of your carries. Like if you want to be protective of your ADC, you can kind of zoom in, knock the, you know, Alistar away or whatever, keep them off of them so they can do damage and survive and stuff. A helpful thing with the ability is that it does come from behind you. So if you end up next to someone and you want to push them in a different direction, don't worry. It does start like a few units away from you. It's a little bit finicky because the distance behind you isn't as far as the distance in front of you that it travels practice a little bit about how you know using the ultimate the only thing that happens when you level it up is you get more soldiers so the width of the the like wall grows as you level it up so you go from like six to seven to eight soldiers so you can catch people out when the edge when the ability is leveled up all the way it's kind of uh you, you get some lucky hits sometimes and that's all of Azir's abilities uh, basically all I can really tell you about his abilities overall is that separately they're kind of whatever, but together you can have some sort of like beautiful unison with them. Practicing how, practicing all the different like combos and movement that we can do with Azir, which we'll talk about in just a second, uh, is really important. So picking up, using the practice tool, kind of figuring out how to do all the different things is super useful. Right now, I wanna to talk to you a little bit about combos. Combos and movement. And also maybe the Shroom of Shuffle, if we get to that. A good combo, a poke combo is just to summon a soldier in front of you, try to summon it like close to the enemy, auto attack them with that soldier, and then quickly Q because you can kind of like cancel the auto and then Q right away and then you get another auto. Um, there's no auto attack like re reset timer, but the auto, you can still like cancel the auto app like after it's done. The auto doesn't interrupt your Q, your Q can interrupt auto attacks. Using that is kind of useful to get like a, like a triple hit. If using something like electrocute, which isn't used very often, um, it can proc it pretty easily. Your movement is the most important thing to get down with Azir. Learning how to move with your E and your Q is super important to being well, really good. The really good Azirs know how to like move around really easily. The main movement, how to travel like the maximum distance really, is to set down a soldier and then use your E and then right before you get to the end, before you hit the soldier, before you stop completely, you wanna use your Q. That will bring you the longest distance possible. I see a lot of Azirs who will just like spam the EQ right, right away. That won't exactly bring you the maximum distance. You can get, actually there's a few walls, like double walls you can get through with this because because by the time you get to your soldier, the distance of your Q has gone far enough that you can cast it and then you will go along with your Q. It also allows you to reach people that you want, like if there's an enemy running away, it allows you to get to them pretty easily. Longer distance means you get hit them with the Q, they slow down, you summon a soldier, you start hitting them, ult them or whatever. It sets up a lot of key moments to engage onto people. We have to learn how to do the Shroom of Shuffle. Basically the Shroom of Shuffle is when you're moving, you at the same time ult as many people as possible in one direction. So you can cast your ult while you're dashing. It's a little bit finicky. It sometimes doesn't work because it just, just the coding doesn't like to do it sometimes. Um, but if you're dashing in a direction, obviously going the maximum distance is possible. You can kind of engage for your team if you want to set up some cool things like with Yasuo or whatever, or just big ultimates, big wombo combos. It's a little bit finicky because you have to do it very quickly because you've already put your mouse like in the direction that you want to move. But then if you want to put them backwards, you have to put your mouse behind you as fast as possible possible to then ult. And the ult sometimes doesn't even work or go off because spaghetti code exists and, and Riot doesn't feel like fixing his ear ever. <laughs> he still has bugs. <laughs>
but it's really key. It's, it's not super key because you're not going to always get off a stream of shuffle like believe me it's not the most important thing to knock five people into a yasuo all like it's not it's not going to be end of the world just being a zir and moving around and dealing a bunch of damage is like pretty much the most important part because you're a late game carry so when you want to do some fun stuff if you do get to the point and i still haven't really mastered this or even tried it that much because it is there's never really a scenario to use it there's like a reverse shuffle you can do where you kind of like set up your soldier and it's a way to be safe after you've ult like ulted someone into your team because a lot of times when you ult you like ult them and then you're like stuck behind your wall with the rest of the enemy team just like barreling down here it's like oh hi azir you're just gonna stand here right oh thank you very much well they just freaking punch you in the face so what you do is you put you set up a soldier you can kind of like set it up beforehand and you can like move in with shifting sands and then alting and then queuing in the opposite direction at the same time therefore moving this direction while alting people towards your team and then you're kind of with your team at the same time it's really cool when it happens and i've done it once on accident <laughs> i've never done it on purpose because it's really wonky to do because ulting while you're moving is already difficult enough with the you know league of legends code being against you and all that it is really cool if you do get it off i wouldn't say like oh in a really tight game try it out because you might just lose the game practice it if you want to but it isn't super key but it's something fun i thought i'd mention the runes you want to take on Azir are super flexible there's a lot of different runes you can take and it depends on, depends on the situation conqueror comet or Halo Blades, those are like, or Lethal Tempo. Those four are like kind of the go-to runes for Azir. Comet's just kind of overall good, so it doesn't, that's not a bad one to pick all the time. Halo Blades, I would say just bring against squishy compositions, especially against a, a squishy mid laner that you're fighting, because it can just like really like deal a lot of damage really fast. Conquer is good for if you have a really tanky composition on the enemy team, it also helps with some healing and stuff like that. So late game, it kind of is useful. It gives you access to presence of mind, which is really good right now if you're running low on mana. Things like presence of mind, mana flu plan are pretty obvious. Transcendence is really good on Azir because it gives them ability haste and some uh, cooldown resets. Also, Taste of Blood and is really good because you tend to accidentally hit your opponent when you're farming, so taking it can like heal you passively, kind of, so it's a nice little trading rune to bring. Items. Items, it, it really, it really does depend on what you're fighting. So if I have a lot of tanks on the enemy team, there, there are two options for tank busting for mages. There is the, there's Leandri's, but it's getting nerfed in a patch soon, or it might be nerfed already, depending on when this video comes out. Uh, but it's still pretty good. It does give ability haste at, at, for your mythic choice. The other mythic choice you can have is Rift Maker. It, I think it'd be okay because it does give you true damage after getting all the stacks, and it also gives you magic pen. So it's kind of nice, although Leandri also gives you magic pen as well. So those two would be the tank busting ones. Probably leaning towards Leandri's because it does give you a decent amount of damage. If you just want overall damage, your mythic item probably would be Ludens. Pretty much 90% of the time you probably buy that because it gives you all the things you want. It gives you magic pen, it gives you the movement speed. It's perfect. So I want to talk a little bit about the earlier items that you pick up. Just for a second. I know this is the item section is getting really long, but that's only because all the items have changed. And, and you know, if you're watching this video, a year from now, if nothing's changed, it still applies. It probably. Probably. I don't know. Who knows? But, 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 but. If you buy the Orange Ring and you farm up to like 700 gold, you can buy the Tear of the Goddess. Now, hear me out. Tear of the Goddess has been really useful. Now, it's easy. It's a cheaper buy. It's not longer 700 gold. It's 400 gold now. So super cheap. It's supposed to be a starter item, but it's much easier for Azir to stack it because the mana gain procs on your soldier's auto attacks. Just saying, that seems really cool. It doesn't have to be just a champion, it can be anything. Uh, a jungle minion, baron, a, a, a creep or whatever. You can hit anything with your soldiers or your abilities to stack the tier. So it's really, Azir tends to stack it up pretty consistently. And Archangel Staff is a big di big dick damage item in the end game because you'll be gaining mana and stuff like that. And you'll get mana for mana flow band and stuff like that. So you have some extra mana, Bunch of AP at the end once you finally build the Archangels. I definitely build it like third. <laughs> Obviously going no Nashers 2 second. Don't ever build Nashers 2 th first, by the way. Don't build it first. <laughs> you don't need to build it first. 
And you're at the game, you're just gonna farm for as much as possible. You want far you want CS and levels. That's like the most important thing because you do nothing early game. People talk about how Kale is pretty useless in the early game. Azir is even more useless because he doesn't deal any damage with his W specifically. Think about Kale's that she gets to level six. Boom, she's a champion now. Azir isn't a champion until like level 13. <laughs> And he has like two items or three. So farming is super important. Get your CS practice down. Also levels. Getting solo XP is super important. I'm going to tell you why. Because there are a few, there are two things to remember that make Azir a bit easier to play. The first is don't use, overuse your Q. I said this before and I'll say it again. Don't overuse the Q in the early game. It eats through your mana. Also, it's your only movement ability for your soldiers. So if you use it, it goes on a long cooldown. You can't move them anymore. If you move them and you've got like Fizz bearing down on you, what are you going to do? Your soldiers are over there and Fizz is coming at you with the face, with the trident, and the stick in the face and out my eyes. Just be cautious about using your Q too much. The other thing is, and not a lot of people understand this about Azir, especially people who like to ridicule the Azir players because they're playing so badly and they don't do anything. Your W, the damage it does, AP, the, the, the attack speed and the, the recharge cooldown, all that stuff does scale off of the level of the ability, but this is the most important thing you have to understand. Azir's W scales, the base damage scales off of your level. So the higher level you are, the more damage your W is, which is why Azir scales into late game. Level one, your auto attacks with the soldiers deal 60 base damage, plus like 60% AP. Now your W's won't be dealing a whole lot of damage early game. That's why your Q tends to be level up first because it deals the most damage early game. Later on, your W at scales your Q by a mile, like two miles, three miles. It outscales it entirely. Your W and your E actually deal more damage overall than your Q, which is why I said it's mostly a movement ability for your soldiers. Now we're talking still about early game because I really want to get this across of how important it is to set up your early game so you have success. Trading and all ends during the early game are really, really, really finicky. Trading, I told you to do the trade combo. You really just want to trade not too often because again, I told you not to use or use your Q. A lot of lane phase, you want to be matching your opponent's push or pushing them away because that way you get your levels faster than them. Getting a level two before them is kind of important if you want to have like some dominance the lane early game because then you can kind of like summon three soldiers and be like haha dealt a lot of damage when you want to trade you want to be careful about triggering minion aggro because your soldiers because they're technically a single target attack they will trigger minion aggro and the minions will just start freaking you up with their little batons and their strawberry juice that they shoot out like attacking your enemy when the minions are auto attacking because then their auto attack are in cooldown is on cooldown so they can't target you when you're first starting out don't think about that just when you start damaging someone especially with your auto attacks move back move back get away from the minions so they stop aggroing on you so you don't take a whole lot of damage when you want to actually like set up for a gank or something or just finish someone off remember you're your strongest when you have three soldiers out that's because your w passive comes online you start doing a lot of extra dps and you start doing a lot of damage overall Another thing you have to be super aware of is that your soldiers have limited range. A good thing to do is to set up your soldiers so they take up as much space as possible so it's harder for your opponent to get to you so that they'd have to walk through the maximum, like the whole diameter of the attack circle of your soldiers so you can do as much damage as possible. In the mid game, we start team fighting, fighting front to back. Don't try to dive in unless you really can set up something for your team. That's really all <laughs> that's really all it is like fighting front to back with your soldiers don't just dive in when you want a team fight because you'll end up just like getting killed most of the time because your team isn't ready for you to dive in there you knock someone like important onto your like adc and they just killed them or whatever just be aware you want to use your ultimate very like intelligently <laughs> And late game, it's your game. Like you've leveled up to level 18 or whatever, or you have four, like several items, you're good to go. You're gonna deal with tons of damage. You pretty much out damage most people because you scale so hard into late game. So lastly, I just wanna talk about a few difficult and interesting matchups. In general, you're gonna have a hard time. <laughs> no matter who you fight, unless you're fighting like a support in the mid lane, it doesn't matter. You're just gonna have a really difficult time with anyone basically, especially early. Now you will have some easier matchups. I'll tell you about some of the easier ones. One of them being Diana. I think Diana is like super easy for Azir. One, because 
if she dives down on you, she has level and she's level six. Like pre six, she's hard because if she hits her Q on you, what are you gonna do? You can't really like, you can shake her off really, so you can just like dash away because she only like tell she dashes to the front of you, so you can dash the other direction. Because you both hit six, you can just alt her away when she alts, and you can actually just as soon as she knocks you knocks you down, like she pulls you in, you just like push her away, and the alt doesn't hit you, and you can just be fine. Zed is like 50-50. <laughs> it really depends on who of you is better at the champion um, because you can really take advantage of Zed's like energy deficiency when he tries to like throw the shadow out and do his little combo to deal a bunch of damage um, because if he doesn't hit you with the spin attack or any ability that matter he won't gain energy back and he'll be, he'll be useless so he'll have to like do something funny to try to get away from you. Um, level six, you can just ult him away, so uh, and you can dash away with a shield. I'd bring barrier in that scenario. Most of the times, I bring teleport, but with like high damage assassins, I'd bring barrier because it just helps. Other mages, you're going to just be like farming most of the game because you can't really reach them. You do outrange a lot of champions, but there's a lot of champions in the meta right now that outrange you, like Zareth and Velkaz and Lux. Talon's really easy to fight, super easy. I would like. <laughs> He can park over parkour over stuff, but he he just makes himself so vulnerable when he dashes into you. You just ult him away, or you can dash away to get away from him. Just like you, you're super safe against him. Difficult matchups, I would definitely say Fizz. Absolutely, Fizz is difficult because uh, it really comes down to who's better at their champion too. But he can more often than not out damage you, burst you down. He doesn't really care. His his little fl trickster ability, the flip, the fish flip. <laughs> the fish flip is what I like to call it. Makes him targetable, so it's just like, well, now I can't hit you, and I can't hit you with any of my other abilities, so he just gets away. Echo's super hard because he he can ignore your... Uh, he, he His teleport with his E is kind of interesting, but also his ultimate makes it hard to ult him away. Like, you can't ult him to kill him. It's basically just, like, farming and CSing as much as possible to try to outscale him. Syndra! Syndra is a freaking bitch, dude, <laughs> destroys you most of the time. She can get you off of her. She deals a whole bunch of damage. She can move while using abilities, which is something that is really kind of like something you wouldn't think about, but her just like walking by and then she just like pff, just plops stuff on top of you. Especially because you have to early game, you don't have a lot of attack speed. She just out damages you. She can one shot you. She has a stun. You don't have a stun. Bit plain and simple. Ari is kind of difficult because the charm, she, if she really waits for it, she holds on to it. Zareth can be difficult because of his stun, but most of the time Zareth isn't too bad because uh, he's pretty immobile and you're pretty mobile. If you can bait out the stun and even then you can quickly ult him in a direction, you can probably kill him. Oh, Malphite. <laughs> if there's ever a Malphite, if there's any tank in your lane, by the way, I'm just gonna say this right out because this has happened to me more often now because of preseason. Garen, Malphite, Galio, uh, uh, Set, like they don't care. They don't give two craps about you ever in the early game because you're so weak. They out heal you, they out damage you, they don't care about your soldiers, they just run by. Just play safe with them. If you can abuse them a lot and they're playing stupid, absolutely. But if they're playing smart, they're just going to like push the wave a bunch, run around, because you can't push as fast as them, especially Garen. And yeah, that's pretty much as much as I can talk about is here. <laughs> Guys will be like this from now on, kind of long-ish. I think this is like, how long has it been? It's actually been, for me, it's been like 30, 40 minutes, about 40 minutes of, of recording. So <laughs> they'll be shortened down obviously, but longer form. I think this is okay. Tell me what you think down below in the comments. Also, if you made it this far, I love you. You're, you're amazing and fantastic and I really appreciate you watching the whole video. <laughs> <laughs> if you enjoyed these videos, I'm gonna be making more of these. Hit the subscribe button if you want to see more stuff like this. Hit the like button if you enjoyed or if you got something out of this as if it gave you something, some information that you didn't know, please tell me in the comments. I really appreciate your comments. I really love answering you guys and stuff like that. I haven't been making videos lately because it's just been like planning out a bunch of stuff. I got I had to work on this video. I have another video in the work. I'm streaming a lot more lately. I just have I'm just super busy now. Uh by the way. Stream, I forgot to plug it at the beginning of the video, but it's okay. I'll plug it now. I stream uh, I, I, almost every day. Some days uh, it just goes, it just depends on how much time I have during the day. But I do stream, try to stream every day except Sunday. That's, that's, that's the way it is. So if you follow me on Twitch, uh, I'll put the link down here somewhere around here. Also down below, Twitch.tv 
twitch.tv slash razzledaz. And yeah, have some fun, play some Zero, play some other champions. Preseason 11, super fun. But yeah, so thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.